Yeah, this is the first varsity race in the women's matchup today here on the Charles, the Radcliffe Black and White, ranked 14th in the country, taking on the 8th ranked defending Ivy League champion Princeton Tigers and the Cornell Big Red. Run you through the lineups again if you're just joining us. For Radcliffe, the coxswain is Catherine Paglioni. Sophomore Ralph Stolf is the stroke. Freshman Georgia Wheeler in seat seven. Junior Hannah Osborne in seat six. Then it's junior Sophie Donica in seat five. Heidi Naka's in seat four. She's a junior. Senior Corinne Bazzini in seat three. Freshman Desi Goodwin in seat two. And senior Tori Bastow is in the bow. So there's your Radcliffe boating, and everybody's on to the stake boats now waiting for alignment. Yeah, I would guess we try to get this off really quickly because it's so hard to stay on the stake boats. We're polling the crews now. Um, Princeton Coxon has her hand in the air. Now it comes down. We've got a flag up. Staying clean is going to be the story of this first 250. Flag is still up. And now it's down, and here we go. And we're off. Princeton comes out very cleanly. Radcliffe stroking pretty cleanly as well. Princeton and Radcliffe have already gained a seat or two on Cordell. Yeah, Princeton. Princeton's moving out early very quickly. They look quite long, quite strong, and they look good. They have not even brought up a splash as Princeton has jumped ahead of Radcliffe. Radcliffe ahead of Cornell. Princeton's got the old 6-7 bucket in their varsity where they have the two starboards on the same side, back to back. Real power move. For the Tigers, that's uh, Hadley Irwin, a freshman in seat seven, and Claire Collins, the talented sophomore in seat six. Tigers 4-0 this season, maybe a little bit underranked at eighth in the country, coming off an Ivy League championship season and looking to remain undefeated at first varsity. I've got Princeton at 36-37, Radcliffe trying to stick with them. You can tell it's a real slog, though. The headwind and the waves are making it really tough. Already open water back to Cornell in third. Princeton trying to find that open water on Radcliffe as well, as Radcliffe's looking to just hang on through these opening choppy meters and wait until it gets a little bit smoother in the back half of the race. Yeah, I'd say that Princeton's probably got seven, eight seats. It's a big first 500, just like we saw with the Harvard Brown varsity race. Well, maybe the strategy that, that we've been talking about, you, you try to hang on for the first 500 and then push it through the clean water, has been flipped on its head. Both Harvard on the men's side last race and Princeton here have shown if you can get off to a good start in these conditions, you can build a huge lead early. Yeah, no, it seems like that's what's going on right now. Radcliffe's hanging in there, though. But Princeton looks quite strong. They're rowing very long. Tigers have wins this season over Brown, Michigan State, Clemson, and Columbia. How about this for last week when they took on Clemson and Columbia, admittedly not two of the strongest squads in the country. The first varsity won by 39 seconds. A 39-second uh, win that, in a 2,000-meter race. That's pretty dramatic. That's talking about different speeds. It looks like Princeton's pushed out to nearly open water now. We're at like 750, and we're Radcliffe's got open water almost a length over Cornell. So we've seen some a split in the crews. Cornell hanging in there, but this is certainly not a day where you go check the times afterwards because it's all about just racing your opponents in these types of conditions. That's yeah, that's exactly right. I mean. We were, it was a bummer to hear that Northeastern and BU canceled their duel, but again, as you said, these times aren't going to mean much. The, the wind and the waves haven't gotten any better, and, and as, as we, I don't think we talked about it, but we flipped the racing order. Yep, to because get it's the, supposed to get worse throughout the course of the day, so they flipped and had the, the first varsities go in the earliest races and will ascend through JV, 3V, yep. etc. throughout the course of the day, ending with fifth varsity to wrap things up. And that's because the, the conditions are just supposed to get worse and worse as the day goes on. Yeah, and Princeton striding out to what's got to be a length and a half of open now over Radcliffe and probably even a bit more back to Cornell. Yeah, undefeated Tigers in first. Again, a lot of changes for this varsity eight boat. It's the defending Ivy League champions. They graduated five seniors from last year's group, but haven't missed a beat yet as they look on their way to a 5-0 and start. For Harvard Radcliffe, th this is another one of those really tough opponents to start this season. They're facing their fourth consecutive top 10 team. But when you have a young group like they do, 
you get a chance to really measure yourself and improve rapidly when you're facing tough competition. That's right, and I think the the Radcliffe women look quite good still. They look they're looking long and relaxed. So the foundation for for something good is, is has been laid, and you know I think yes, it might be a little bit of a different answer in in a little bit cleaner conditions, um, but they're still. They're still fighting for it, and, you know, obviously, you still got to beat Cornell. Yep, and that would be the first win of the season for the Radcliffe Black and White if they do finish ahead of the Big Red. Right now, look well on the way inside the final 1,000 meters. Of course, still not a month until the Ivy League Championships, which you'll be able to find on the Ivy League Digital Network. So if you're a young team hoping to improve at a quick rate, y you have that carrot out in front of you to really build for over the next month. Yeah, no, and... The Ivy League Championship is something that's it's pretty new, and you know, candidly, I think it's pretty special. And so it's exciting we've added that that championship race. Um, it's not something the men have. We have the, the Eastern Sprints Regatta, um, but um, you know, something to look forward to, and they'll get another shot at the Tigers. So that'll be that'll be great. Princeton, really impressive. They've looked so clean and smooth the entire way, and they're heading inside the final 500 meters with at least a three-length lead. Then it's the Radcliffe black and white, and they have a similar margin back to Cornell sitting in third. Yeah, the, and, and you can see all of the crews have really cleaned up in the better water. Um, there's really, there are no exceptions. Cornell looks quite smooth and long now. Radcliffe as well. And the Tigers have looked a little bit smoother and longer throughout the race, but look quite good as we see them here finishing through the last 500. Cornell has a, an inter I know it's something we've talked about in past years, very interesting home course that has a, a curve in it as, as well. So a little bit different to get out here on the straight line racing. Yeah, it, um, having raced up there once before, it, it can really throw you off. Um, and you have a staggered start as well, which can be a pain. Um, because you don't really know what your true margin is versus the other team. Um, and then they also race in, you can call it a ditch, you can call it a, a water, like, I don't know. But it, it the water is actually excellent because it's, yeah. it's a very small body of water and very protected. Yeah. Um, so they probably don't spend a lot of time doing high shrub pieces in choppy conditions unless they go out into the lake. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's a it's an interesting course. Princeton heading home, take the class of '75 Cup ahead of Harvard Radcliffe and Cornell Tigers. Dominant, wire to wire, clean strokes the whole way. I don't know if they've caught a crab yet. The the entirety of this course. No, nah, they've lo they've looked they've looked very good. None of the crews have. You know, I think staying clean has been has been a big help for the Tigers so though. They've definitely stayed the cleanest of all the crews. And actually, we probably spoke too soon. The wind is really picking up here it in the is, second yes. half of this race. Um, and as you start to really feel it towards the end of the race, it's I can tell you it's not fun dealing yeah, it, with the wind. It, it is howling. It's got to be at least 20 miles an hour at this yeah. point. Princeton yeah. stroking toward the flag. Tigers move to 5-0 and on the season with a dominant performance. Princeton stroking through. Where is that flag? And they take it. There's the flag. Tigers win. Here comes Harvard Radcliffe in second. Cornell will finish third. Yeah, the, the wind really accelerated in that last 250. This is this is pretty pretty stiff. Harvard Radcliffe finishing things off. Flag comes up, a second place finish for Harvard Radcliffe, and the win against Cornell will move the black and white record to one in four on the season. Cornell, even though they didn't have the speed, looked impressively clean throughout as well, so maybe good things to come down the road for this big red group as they'll finish things off. So the big red crossed the finishing line. And we'll turn around here on the Ivy League Digital Network. Coming up next, we'll be back to the Harvard men. Second varsity will take on Brown. That's coming up next on the Ivy League Digital Network.